Good morning. Hallelujah. Make sure you turn everything down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Teresa. Good morning. Thank you, Lord. Please share when you come on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kareem. Good morning. Good morning. Is it cold outside? Good morning, Felicia Harris. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please share. Please share. Please share. Uh, please share. Name of Jesus. How y'all doing this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we give you praise. We give you praise. Yes, it is cold. <laughs> but it's supposed to be hot for the rest of the week, so we better enjoy it today. Hallelujah. You're doing fantastic. That's good. That's good. That's good. Y'all ready to pray? My goal is just to pray today. God, bring me a word. Send me a word in my mind. We're going to do the word too, but I, I just feel like we need to just worship and pray today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Kiki. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, Joel. How you doing? Good morning. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love and kindness and the opportunity again that you allow us to pray, allow us to seek you like never before, knowing that this is the season, God, for not giving up and, and just to push through as hard as we can, God, and allow you to move down on the inside of us. Father, we give you praise and honor. Father, we lift you up for what you're doing. So many exciting things that you're doing and what you're about to do. And I thank you, Lord, for importation on the inside of us of everything that we need, God, to do this work that you call us to do. So, Father, in Jesus' name, from the crown of our head to the very sole of our feet, we ask for your anointing to flow through us like never before. That we're ready for battle. We're ready, God, to do the work you call us to do. We're ready to stand, God, and do it with all our might, God. And we thank you in the name of Jesus that we won't shirk back. That everything that you called us to, God, that we shall be free in our spirits to allow you to move on the inside. And, Father, we ask the Holy Ghost to have his way and do it again down on the inside in the name of Jesus like fire of the Holy Ghost, God, we, tell, we ask you to just camp around us. The fire of the Holy Ghost to protect us from the enemy. When every darts come, God, we thank you, God, that it shall not penetrate our spirit and our hearts. So right now, God, we thank you. We worship you. We lift you up. We're so excited about the things that you're doing in our life, God. We're so excited that you picked us, God, even though we didn't feel worthy to do everything that you called us to, God. But you picked us. That means you put something down on the inside. And you prepared us for ministry. And right now, God, we thank you. We are so grateful, God, for what you're doing in our life. Though we go through pain and though we go through disappointment and though we feel like giving up, I thank God for the peace of the Holy Ghost, the peace that passes all our understanding, God. I thank you right now, God, to heal every pain, heal everything that we're going through, God. Because we, oh, God, we're ready for ministry. We're ready to do everything you call us to do. God, I thank you, God, in Jesus' name for the glory that's filling this atmosphere and filling everyone's atmosphere. We thank you right now that we're going all the way in. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing was coming to do something and it's coming to change us, God. We thank you that our mind is being renewed daily, God. We thank you that we're doing everything that you called us to do and we know what we called to do, God. That we will not falter. We will not stop. We will not fall. I thank you in the name of Jesus that you are first in our life. 
the Philippians 2 and 5. You said, let this mind be in you, which also in Christ Jesus. I thank you in the name of Jesus that our mind is pure. Our mind is holy before you, God. You said if we, we uh, set our thoughts on you, God, you would establish them. So, God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Our mind is on you, Father, not on our circumstances, not on what we're going through. But, God, our mind is on you, God. You said you'll take the bad and turn around for our good, God. So I thank you in the name of Jesus. Though the darts may fly, though the storm may come, though the winds may blow, I thank you that we're holding on as hard as we can, God, because we know that you are real guard, God, that you are help in the time of trouble. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we lift you up, we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, God, to set us on fire before you, God. Don't let nothing stand in our way, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that though we've been through things, and though we are still going through things, God, I thank you as a stepping stone for what our future is and our destiny, God. I thank you that it's making us strong, God, in the name of Jesus, God. So cover our hearts, cover our spirit, cover our minds, God. In the name of Jesus, help us to stand when we feel we can't stand no more, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we cry out to you, God. Oh, we cry out to you in the name of Jesus, God. We give you glory. We give you praise and we give you honor. We tap into your spirit, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor, God. We allow you to move down on the inside of us like never before, God. Because we shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. We shall not be moved, God. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. We shall not be moved, God. Doesn't matter what happened. Doesn't matter what we go through. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory that we're set the stage for a miracle. We set the stage for a breakthrough. We set the stage for a healing. We set the stage for whatever you want to do in our life, God. So we thank you and give you praise and honor. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Lord. We thank you. God, we tap into your spirit, God. We tap into your anointing, God. We tap into that anointing, oh God, that falls from my head on into the body. We thank you in the name of Jesus. The mantle that you put on us, we thank you, God. Oh, my shot that we're walking in it, God. Oh, by my son of my son, we're walking in what you called us to, God. We're doing all we're supposed to do, Father. So we give you praise and we honor you and lift you up, God. I thank you right now, God, because we know the best is yet to come, God. Oh, no more. Thank you for your presence that we feel down on the inside. Thank you that we're not letting go your hand, God. Father, I thank in Psalms 91, it says, Who Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in your shadow of Almighty. I thank you in the name of Jesus that we're fighting your rest, Father. We're fighting your peace. We're fighting your joy. In the name of Jesus. With the devil meant for bad, I thank God that you turn it around for our good. In the name of Jesus. So we press in, God. All that we have, we press in, we press in, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Come on, let's just worship him for a few minutes. We give you praise. We, if you worship him, come on, give me some hearts. We give you praise. Come on, this is like a worship right now. We give you praise. 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 In the name of Jesus, all of us, Father, we know that we're covered by the blood of Jesus. Oh, God, the, the blood is on the doorposts of our hearts and, and the doorposts of our houses and our situation. God, in the name of Jesus, we press on in. We press on in. We press on through, knowing that without you, we cannot do this, God. So we lay our cares on the altar, God, in the name of Jesus. It's our sacrifice that we lay on the altar, God. And we won't take it back, God, but we leave it there, God. 
I thank you that we know in our strength we can't do nothing, but in all our ways we acknowledge in you, God, and you are directing our path, God. So in the name of Jesus, we press in in the name of my soul, go to my higher. Oh, God, we submitting to you with all that we have, God. We presented our bodies, God, to you like that right now in the name of Jesus. We allow you to do it, God. Oh, go to both shots up. We allow you to move down on the inside of us, God. So right now, we just worship. You said there was two or three touches that you have been a mess, Father. So right now, we're coming together to to church and we're coming together to agree God knowing that we're sending the devil running right now in the name of Jesus God we thank you we give you praise oh settle our spirit right now in the name of Jesus settle our hearts and settle our mind God Oh, the most shunned out of my satire. Father, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus that our circumstance, God, will not move us from out of your will and purpose that you have for our life, God. So, God, we praise you. We exalt you, God. Oh, we give you liberty to move down on the inside, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We praise your Shanda la Bahia. We praise your name, Shanda la Bahia. Because we know where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, God. He come to the Shanda la Bahia. Father, we worship, we worship, we worship, God. We were my masiki and all of us under the Mahaya. We keep under the masiki under the Mahaya. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you. I'm a shataya. We lift you up in the most shake here under the Mahaya. We give you praise. Oh, most under the Mahaya. We thank you, God. That our mind is being renewed, God. That our mind is being renewed, God. That our mind is being changed, God. That our mind is on the things of you, God. I thank you in the name of Jesus. We praise you. 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 Let the anointing fire, God, wrap around us now, God. Cover us in the most basata like never before, God. We thank you. We thank you. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost, God. Renew our minds and our spirits and our hearts and our souls, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you, Lord. Oh, We give you praise, we give you praise. We gave God of my soul, called of my ear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you God. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Oh, ba 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 siki and Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Oh, we find our rest in you. We find our peace in you. In the name of Jesus, our mind. We're praying about our mind. Oh, God, that's what we do our thinking. That's what we do our our uh, imagination and 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 that's one of the things that the the enemy mess with us is our minds i'm trying to look up the definition of of a mind right now that's when before we started praying uh i was just thinking about our minds and that's where the devil tries to attack us and and uh, hinder us is in our minds in our spirit and um it's a place of thinking it's a place that we uh the devil, if he can, that's what the Bible said, we have to renew our minds daily. And if he can get a hold of our minds, he pretty much got our whole body. But I was trying to find the, the Webster Dictionary of the word mind. It just come to me a, a few minutes ago that he plays with our minds. We, were, we always use that word, we're about to lose our mind. And what it is, is that is the center part of our, um, is our if our understanding is our thinking, it's, it's where our thought life is. 
And if our mind is just on our situations and on our, our problems, what we go through, that's what the devil torment us. And that's why he ha uh, tries to hinder our spirit. And I, I just feel led just to pray for our mind. Our minds have been renewed. I, I, one thing I don't deal with is uh, the, 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 the spirit of the past. Sometimes the devil will bring stuff up in your mind with the past. And sometimes he'll try to hinder you of what God wants you to do in the future. That's why Paul said, forgetting those things in our past and pressing towards the mark, towards the high calling of God. It means forget about the latter years and move forward to the, to the place God's called you to. And what the devil tries to do, he tries to attack your mind and it makes you where you can't move forward. Anytime somebody is always talking about their mental mind or their mind, that means their mind is kind of set in, the pl in, a, in a place where the devil don't want them to move forward. And the, 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 the word forgetting means you don't remember it no more. You put it behind you. And uh, one thing I know about, you know, things we've done years ago in the past, and, and uh, it, it hinders us from our future. But one thing about it, we got saved. We, we become a new creation. And old things have passed away and become, we hope all things have come new. And if all things become new, that means that person you used to be is not even there anymore. And what the devil tried to do, he tries to, you to, you to repent it. Which the, Lord, the Lord said he threw your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. You have repented and you let God know that uh, you're sorrowful of what everything you've done. Because I know we've done, done some crazy stuff in our uh, past and and we're trying to go forth in our future and the devil will use us use those things to torment us and let us know that that's who we are but um you know when you when you're saved and you really get saved like you should god will deliver you but sometimes the devil will come back and try to torment your mind and try to bring back uh things that you know some things you have forgotten i've, I've got to the point sometimes where uh the close i get with god the closer the enemy tries to remind me of what God already forgave me for, or already took, or already delivered me from. And what he do, he try to keep your mind in this little chaotic uh, array, shamble or array. And he'll try to use things against you to let you think that God don't love you or don't like you because of the situation you're in. But I come to tell you that when we pray and when we seek God, we have to keep our mind covered. We have to keep our mind uh, full of prayer. Because if we don't, then he'll cause us to keep on rehearsing the things that he already forgotten. When he said he threw it back in the sea of forgiveness, forgetfulness, it means he's already forgot it. And so he had me to pray for the mind this morning because, you know, that's where we always, that's where it starts. When Jesus got tempted on the mountain, that's what the devil used was his mind. And sometimes when we watch the, the, um, the, the movie, it looked like the devil was really there. But it was his mind. The devil was 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 um, trying to torment his mind, trying to get his mind off God, trying to get his mind off of his destiny of what God's called him to do. And he thought that he could manipulate Jesus' mind. But guess what? When your mind is full of the word and the word is down on the inside and all Jesus can say is it, it is written. Whenever the devil came, he gave him back his word. But if you don't have the word down on the inside, then you have nothing to fight with. And so what Jesus did, he used the word. He, you know, the devil, you're a liar. Get behind me because it is written. So he took authority over his mind. He took authority over his actions and his attitude. And one thing I learned that when you get delivered and set free, you don't have to bring up those old things again. The devil will try to bring up those negatives and he'll try to, he tries so much to do, to mess our minds and our, even our ministry up. He tries so much to, to let us live in our past so we can't go into our destiny and to our future. But the mind is part of your thinking. It's a, it's a part of, it even a mess with your meditation because your meditation is part of your mind. That's why he told us to, to uh, read the word and meditate on it day and night. And what that does, it keeps your mind free. It keeps it holy. It, 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 it keeps, um, it keeps um, the enemy away from trying to torment you or, or, or talk to you or, a cause your imagination. So the Bible says, cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the glory of God. And what he does is in renewing your mind by the washing of the word, because he'll keep on making you or, or, or think that you still that person in the past. But I come to tell you, he said, forgetting those things, put those things behind you and press on. That means press on. It means that he will try to keep bringing things back. 
until we leave here, the devil is going to try everything to, to, you know, make us not know who we are in Christ. You know, we're, we're not that person before Christ. We've become a new creation. And so he has changed our minds. He's renewed our minds. And he has changed us. He changed our thinking habits. He changed our thought habits. Uh, we are a new person, a new creation. We're not that person we used to. I know we... Um, a lot of people, when they're in a, wor a world, they have this, this world name that they have. I know, you know, everybody have different names. I, I wasn't out there like that to have, a, you know, the world names. But, you know, you have those names you, we, that you, they called you in the world. But when you got saved, you're, you're not that name no more. I know some people get saved. People don't use those names they used when they, they was in the world because that was that person then. But when your mind is being renewed and changed, which is part of your thinking, your mind is your conscious. Your oh my God, your, your mind is part of your brain. It's part of the way you function. And if your mind is not walk, walking right, nothing else is working right. And that's why God always talks about with the shield of him and of salvation is covering your head. With a, ham a hammer of salvation, helmet of salvation, is covering that mind. That mind has to be covered because that's how you think and that's how you function. And when he wants to pl do any play with anything, if he causes sickness, he causes pain, he causes hurt, all that's from in the mind. And he said, renew your mind daily and, and, and don't even worry. Worry is part of your mind. Worry comes from the conscious and, and from your mind. It causes you to think hard. Worrying is thinking too hard about the the opposite thing are the wrong things or the bad thing. That's worry. And that's why he said, you know, renew your mind with the washing of the word, praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up in the Holy Ghost. It caused you to forget about things you're going through. I'm telling you, if you if you can't live in the natural, because the natural will, oh my God, it will cause you to see things that's not really there. You heard people say, I'm about to lose my mind. But I'll say, listen, I'm losing my mind for Christ and I'm gaining the mind of Christ. It's okay to lose your mind in the natural, not in sickness, but lose it and gain God inside your mind, you know. So I heard people say, well, I'm about to lose my mind. Yeah, you're about to lose your mind naturally. But if you don't replace it with, with the renewing of the mind or the mind in Christ, then that's called crazy. <laughs> that is called crazy. But I come to tell you that we got to get this mind under control. It's where your perception is. It's where your judgment is. It's where your potential flows. It goes through your mind. You know, when you go to school, you have to study. You have to memorize. You have to, you have to, you know, keep your mind focused. Focus means you have to control the mind and how your mind is thinking and how it's flowing. Because sometimes you can be sitting somewhere and your mind can wander off on, on no telling what else. I mean, your mind is so full of, your mind sometimes brings up negatives of your past. That's why you got to be careful of what you watch on television, uh, what you, your eye gates, what they see, because your mind will, will, will take a picture of a negative of something that you saw, and guess what? That negative could torment your mind. It could torment you, and that's why it's not good to watch porno mu uh, 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 movies and, and watch the, watch them, look at the magazines and things like that, because you are polluting your mind, and if you're doing something that's not uh, uh, giving you fulfillment in your mind, uh, uh, not making your uh, your mind go to another level, another place, or educating your mind, or uh, reading your, your getting the word of raising your level of of, of faith that's in the mind, or uh, uh, raising the level of, of of where your destiny is, and that's why I said if you can see it, if you can see it. Come on, you can have it. That's, you know, that's stepping out on faith. That's the mind. When Peter stepped out on the water, you know, he was looking straight at Jesus. But his mind was telling him that I should not step out on the water because I, I really can't do this in the natural sense because of the gravity. I can't walk on water. But it was his mind talking to him. His mind was telling him I can't do this. Plus, he started seeing from his eyes and the wind and the storm and seeing that, oh my God, this is not natural. But then when he focused his mind on Jesus, he found out that he can do something supernatural, something that he could not do. And that's when the devil tries to get your mind messed up. It starts here. You meditate on the wrong thing. The Bible says meditate on the word day and night. But sometimes we don't meditate on the word. We meditate on our situations day and night. We meditate on our problems day and night. And it, 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 it messes up our 
our thinking. It messes to the point where we don't want to get out of bed, which that causes depression. Anytime that your mind is not right, is not stable, you always going to be, it, it causes you to worry when, when you don't see a future or don't see your destiny. You don't see a uh, Sometimes it looks like God is not moving. It looks like you cannot trace him. The devil starts tormenting your mind that God don't love you. And he, he starts putting negatives of things that are not even real. You know, he gives you illusions of things that's not even real. But I come to tell you that if we will give God our minds, oh my God, give our, him our minds and, and give him our spirit. And allow him to do whatever he needs to do down on the inside of us. And allow him to take control. I don't care what situation it is. I found out when I find myself feel like I'm about to worry. Or feel like my mind is just not focused on what it needs to be focused on. I found that by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Spirit. Rising the Spirit up down on the inside of me. It gives me my peace. It gives me my joy. It gives me everything I need. Because in this time where we live. And come on, so many people are dying from these diseases this disease is going around and so many wondering you know they're going to catch it and and, and and they so worried about disease more than they worried about god and what he can do and what the devil is he put fear in our hearts fear your mind fear paralyzes you which it paralyzes your mind it paralyzes your thought life it paralyzes your conscience and oh my god if he can take control of those things he really got you come on they tell you that if you, you when when you're worried about something, it, it can harm your body. If too much worry can harm your body, and that's what God has the antidote for our minds and what we should do daily. He said, meditate on the word day and night, so the devil won't have no place in your mind, no place in your situation, and no place in your heart. So right now, come on, come on, we're praying for the mind that God is renewing us right now. That we're not that old creation. We are delivered. We are set free. What's in our past, in our past. And I'm so happy about that, that I am not that person I used to be. Sometimes when I think about all oh, my life and things that I've gone through, and, and I, I wonder how am I in my right mind right now? But because I know Jesus, oh my God, by the washing of the word, he has delivered me and set me free. And I got to keep, you know, meditating on the word, to let, to let that word know, the washing of the word, to let that, that word know that I am delivered, I am set free, that I am not that person no more. Come, some of y'all might have dealt with anger. Some of y'all might have dealt with abuse. And some of y'all might have dealt with some things that you went through in the past. But I come to tell you, you are delivered. You are set free. You don't have to pull back up those negatives again. And sometimes other people still got you on that other level and still pulling up negatives that you have forgot about. But you got to say, hey, I'm not that person no more. Oh, my God. What I went through in my past is not me, and I'm not taking that into my future. Come on, come on. I'm renewed. I am changed. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. We can't let the level torment us like that. Come on, come on. God wants to use a focused and sober person. He wants to use a person that, 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 that that's ready, that's prayed up, that's meditate on the word, and you're feeding your soul. You're feeding your mind. You're feeding your spirit and you're allowing God to impart something on the inside of you. If your mind is always worried about your past and, and worried about what you're going through and worried about what you're dealing with, it brings up a wall and God can't get through. And all he's telling you, come on, come on, come on, come on, wash yourself in the word. Come on, come on, find some scriptures that, that will, will renew your mind. Find some scriptures that you can meditate on so you can so you can enter into that rest. God wants to, to, to be in rest. He said to give us perfect peace for those who keep their minds stayed on him. And that's why the devil torments the mind so much because there's so many scriptures in the mind. The mind is a gate. Come on. Oh, my God. And that's how the conscious and that, that's how the devil get in your dreams, you know, because when you unconscious, he try to. If he can't get you while you're awake, he'll get you while you sleep. So I come to tell you, I need somebody to say, renew my mind, renew my mind, renew my mind. Oh, my God. Renew my mind. Renew my spirit. Renew my heart. Come on. Come on. Write that on the, on the screen. Renew my mind. Renew my heart. Renew my spirit. Renew my soul. 
Come on. All of us shine out of my sacred in my higher. It's a, it's, it's a consciousness. Your mind is, it's an awareness. You know, it's a, it's a place that, you know, that the devil will, he will torment and make you think you're about to lose your mind and make you think you're about to go crazy. A lot of people in the mental home, it's their mind, it's the devil and torment them and, and, and told them that they were crazy. It is a demonic spirit that tries to take hold of them and try to keep them locked up. They lock up, come on, come on, in the situations of their past. And they and they keep repeating it over and over and over. And, and, and it caused them to lose their mind. It caused them to be frustrated. And you get the frustration of the mind. And you get the thinking. And you get the past. And, and you get all the things you're going through. And all that's going through your mind at the same thing. To the point where you're overpowering your brain. You're overpowering your mind. And it causes you to go crazy. And it causes you to lose heart. And it causes you to take down and give up. And some people cause them to... Uh, commit suicide because their mind is telling them that they're no good, that life is not going to be no better than this. I come to tell you right now, God is coming to renew you. He's coming to change you. He's coming to set you free. He's come. I don't care what people do around you. I don't care what their mindset is. If I got to get my mind together, come on, come on, my mind straight, my mind holy. Come on, come on. If my mind is in Christ Jesus, then God has a place in me that he can use, come on, to help someone else. I can't help no one else if I'm not helped myself. So we're coming the mind right now. We're coming the consciousness. We're coming the thinking. Come on. The, 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 the place of meditation. The place of, 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 of not worrying and, and not having doubt. The place of fear, which fear will paralyze us. And fear will stop us in our tracks. But I come to tell you that, that thinking pattern that we're not thinking on, on, uh, 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 on the wrong things, but we're thinking on the good things. Think on these, these things. Think on the good things. Come on. Think, uh, oh my God, on what God's about to do. Think on the exciting part that God has chosen you and he's giving you a ministry and he's giving you something down on the inside. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. That means that whatever the devil comes and whatever he tries to say, he can't get, because I got on the helmet of salvation. Why did God say a helmet? A helmet is something that's real heavy and real thick. Oh, my God. If anything tried to, any dart or rock or anything tries to hit that hammer, hel helmet, it'll just fall off and pop off because it will not penetrate to your head. That's a covering. That's part of the, the sword. That's a sword. That's, a, that's part of your armor. He said, put on the army of God so you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. So one of the ones is the helmet of salvation. That means that's protecting your head and making sure the enemy cannot penetrate your thoughts and your mind. When you become saved, come on, come on, the helmet automatically comes on your head. Protection automatically starts protecting you because you become a new creation. Old things are passed away. But sometimes if we don't get in the word and we don't fast and we we don't pray and we don't do what we're supposed to do by going into our secret place the devil will snatch that helmet off and you want i'm saved why am i going through why am i about to lose my mind why, why are things happen to me because you allow the devil to come and steal your helmet come on put steal your helmet oh i feel god you allow the devil mm. you allow the devil to steal your helmet. Come on, put on there. I want my helmet back. I'm, I'm snatching my helmet back. That means I'm snatching my peace back. That means I'm snatching my joy back. Come on, put on. Come on, come on. He cannot steal my helmet. My helmet of salvation. The helmet that protects my head. That way, that, that's, the, that's, that's when the devil cannot penetrate your spirit. He cannot penetrate your heart because it starts in your mind. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You ever wonder why he said meditate on the word day and night? Because as long as the word is a sword, that, that's your weapon. As long as that word is in your mental mind, in your spirit, I don't care what you think or what the doctors say, even what the therapists say. The Bible says if you renew your mind daily and you keep your mind on him, he would establish your thoughts, your conscience. He would establish your thinking. Come on, come on. 
Oh my God. It's, it's the thing that you decide. You make decisions with. That is your mind. Uh, uh, things you have to think about and plan. That's your mind. It's hard to plan when your mind is jacked up and is full of all kind of crap and things that you're going through. But that's why he said you got to cast it down. What does casting down mean? mean? I'm snatching and I'm putting away. I'm moving it out of my path. I'm moving it out of my view. I, I'm casting it. At least I'm throwing it away. I'm not allowing it, it to penetrate my heart and my spirit. That means I'm doing something about it. Casting down imagination and everything that exalts itself against the glory of God that's down in your spirit and down in your life that's that 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 casting everything out like the, the scripture says lay aside every weight and every sin and everything that easy persuade us or move us out of his past i got this vote down because it's coming so fast come on just take a deep breath <laughs> it's our mind you know, we say we want boldness. God, you know, bless them. That's in the mind. Come on. It's your mind is telling you, I'm afraid, I'm scared. It's your mind is telling you what, what you can't do and what you can't do. It's your mind. Your body follow, follows what the mind is saying and how the mind is thinking. Ooh, mind out of most shot time. We talk about we got to know ourselves. and we got to. Without Christ, we don't know nothing. Because you know what? When I learned myself before I got saved, I had to come on, renew my mind, renew my heart. I know you can think back on some crazy things that you did years ago. And while your mind being renewed, and you think about that person, you wonder, what was I thinking? What was I doing? Where was I? Where was me? Where was I at during this whole time? How can I be? You ever said, how can I be so stupid? How can I be so weak? But no, your mind was not in Christ. The devil was in, come on, come on. He was using you. The devil was, come on, let you, allow you to do all kind of crazy stuff. And in your mind, you thought everything was okay. That's why you have to have the word of God down on the inside. Oh my. My God, you have to know that the devil has no place in you no more. He might have used you back there. But sometimes it's hard to, to not think back on some of the stuff you have done. And sometimes the devil can play with that too. You can't think too hard about your past because he keep bringing up. And you kept thinking, oh my God, why did I do that? Why did someone tell me, oh God, you know, I'm just a disgrace to society. But I come to tell you that God has renewed you. He has thrown your sins into forgetfulness. He has changed you. He has renewed your mind. You are not crazy. The mental capacity of your mind is intact. Come on. And sometimes he tries to bring up the negative. But I come to tell you, meditate on the Find you some scriptures. Find you something, a verse to memorize that your mind will all. You can be in a conversation with somebody. And you can be rolling the word over and over in your mind. And they're looking at you and you listen to what they're saying. But in the back of your mind, you got the word going forth. You're allowing the word to you. Oh, come on, because it penetrates your heart. Because that person talked to you. You're making sure that they don't sow no seed of discord. Or they don't sow nothing down on the inside that doesn't belong like God. You can meditate. The Bible says pray without ceasing. That means I can have a conversation with you. But a prayer will is still steady turning down on the inside of me. I'm, come on, I can be talking to you, but I'm praying in the Holy Ghost and praying in the Spirit. I can be talking to you, and I can be hearing about your situation and hearing about your issues, but they don't affect me because I'm constantly praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm keeping myself covered. I'm keeping myself at peace. I'm keeping myself, come on, come on, come on, washing the work daily. He's constantly washing me. Come on, put washing me, washing me. If I'm helping you, come on, let me see some hearts right now. We do not have to live a Christian life always in torment, always depressed, always having our thinking pattern messed up, our conscience is always jacked up. We do not have to live a Christian life always in a battle all the time, not over the same thing over and over. The Bible says he gives you peace beyond your understanding. That means when you come a child, become a child of the king, there's a peace that come over you, even though all your world around you is falling apart. People are fickle, acting crazy around you, but you still have your peace peace. And that's because you become a new creation. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. My my way of thinking, the way I used to are passed away. 
and I'm not going to bring up those things. Come on. Oh my God. I'm not going to conjure up those things. Come on. I'm going to forget those things and I'm going to put them way far behind me because I got a ministry to worry about and I got souls that I have to reach. I don't come on. I said last week, I don't have time for this. Come on. I don't have time to play games. Come on with my mind. Your mind is very serious. Your mind, you have to protect. Come on. Your mind, you have to keep holy. Oh, my God. Y'all say the word holy. Your mind, you have to keep holy. Oh, there's so many areas of sickness and cancer and all kind of things that can affect you if your mind is not on uh, uh, on good things, on, on holiness, of uh, being renewed, or being changed. And that's why we wear sick all the time, because you worry yourself to, into sickness. You worry yourself into pain. You worry yourself. Come on, worry comes with all kind of uh, uh, aunts and aunt, uh, cousins and all kind of things. Worry caused all kind of things to happen. And I always tell myself when I feel myself trying to worry or, or the devil try to bring things up in my past. And I, you know, I, and I try to, you know, you, you tell yourself, oh, no, oh, no, devil, you're not touching this place right here. Come on, because I, I about lost my mind about three times. Come on, come on. Oh, my love, Shonda, my higher. When I was in the world, I about lost my mind three times. Do you think that I'm going to be saved and allow the devil to use my mind? Oh, whenever I feel myself getting ready to worry, whenever I feel myself getting doubt, whenever I feel myself, uh, you know, walking in fear, because I know God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Come on, that means a peaceful, soulful mind. Whenever I feel myself trying to walk in fear and trying to walk in doubt and, and all these things are happening around you, I go to the rock, the foundation. I go to the scriptures. I go to the manual and I find me some scriptures and I roll it over and over and over in my mind until that part that the enemy tried to take advantage of that part of my brain that he tries to you know, tell me I'm about to lose my mind. I roll the scripture over and over in my mind until that part of the enemy, come on, has to, it has to leave. Come on, oh, Baba Haya. The word of God causes the devil to leave you. So I don't have to bring up my past. I don't have to bring up my fears. I don't have to bring up my doubts. Because if I have the word of God, the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's cutting going in and it's cutting going out. Oh, my God. He's purging us. Come on. He's setting us free. Oh, my God. I don't care what situation that we're going through. Oh, I don't care what situation we're going through. I don't care what we're dealing with. If we get our minds on Jesus, we may be going through situations. We may be going through circumstances, but, I, but we should not be going through like the world going through because God is our real God. He's got our back. Come on. He's taking us through. And what we're going through, we, I, I tell the devil all the time, I'm not wasting all the stuff that I've been through. It's a stepping stone to not my next place in God. It's a stepping stone to my anointing. It's a stepping stone. Come on, come on, because it puts a word in my mouth. Because when God delivered me, come on, he said, whom the son set free is free indeed and then when God delivered me come on I can come on give somebody the blueprint on how God delivered me come on I, I will go through things that they wouldn't have to go through because I got the antidote come on come on I learned to trust in God I learned to meditate on his word and allow him to do what he needs to do on the inside of me come on come on if I'm speaking to you give me some hearts Give me some hearts. Give me some heart. This mind, it is my conscience. It is my thinking. I'm telling you, everything operates from the mind. If the head was cut off, no, no parts of the body would be able to function. When you lose your mind, there's no parts of your body that's able to total function the way it is supposed to function. And that's why the devil, come on, he attacks the mind. And that's why we got to put on the helmet of salvation. We got to keep it covered, keep it covered. Oh my God, where it will not come off your head. Come on, all the Father, we give you praise, God. 
and our mind is being covered right now. Doesn't matter what situation or what we're going through, our sadness, our unhappiness, doesn't matter what we're going through or what we're dealing with. Father, I come in the name of Jesus to let everyone know they heal, they set free, they are delivered. God is oh, operating on us right now. He's taking out everything that's not like, oh my God, that's not like him. He's removing, come on, he's pruning us. And he's removing the things, come on, that keep us at bay, that keep us from moving, that keep us from going forth. He's giving us our passion back. Come on, come on, he's giving us our passion back. And he's giving us our ministry and, and telling us what we need to do. Oh my God, I am so grateful that God has not, oh God, that God has not forgotten me, that he's not giving up on me, oh my, 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 stop, that he is not, has not left me alone, even though there's times it feel like he has, but some things you had to press through, some things, because the Bible says, he said, he said, uh, press, come on, come on, that means it, press through, that means you will go through circumstances, that means you will go through pain. I think I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. But if you press through, on the other side is your deliverance. Come on. But he said in, in Philippians 4 and 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Means think on these things. Pure. Think on these things. Oh my God. Whatever so things are lovely. Whatever so things are good. Oh, Think on these things. But don't think on the things that the devil is trying to torment your mind with. I know sometimes it gets hard sometimes. And I know sometimes it gets lonely sometimes. And I know sometimes it seems like you're not going to get through your situation you're going through. But I come the devil. Think on these things. Think on these things that are lovely. Think on these things that are true. Think on these things that are pure. Come on. Oh, my God. He's helping us. Come. He's giving us the antidote to renew our minds, to keep our minds clean and holy and focusing on him. Oh, my God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness and grace and your mercy. We thank you for what you're doing on the inside of us, God. We thank you for your love, God, God, because you first love us. So right now, from the crown of our head, oh, oh, the crown of our head, which is our mind on top. The mind is uh, 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 the first thing, come on, that we pray about. From the crown of our head, God, to the very sole of our feet, God, that means you're renewing our body, God, that you go, oh, you're filtering through our whole body, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus that you are changing us, that you're delivering us, that you're setting us free, God. Our conscience is pure. Our conscience is clean. Our thinking, God, is properly in the right order, God. I thank you that we're not tormented by our past, God, and that we're going totally into our future. I thank you that you're having a way in our life, God. We're thinking on good things. Come on, come on, come on. We're not thinking of our past experiences. We're not thinking about what we've been going through. We're not thinking about, oh my God, oh my God, something that we can't change, only the Holy Spirit can change. I thank you right now, God, that we are new creations in Christ, God, that we're born again which that means we're starting over again that means we're fresh we fresh out of the womb i thank you in the name of jesus god that you saw fit god that someone prayed for us god someone had us on their minds god and i thank you in the name of jesus that we did not lose our mind god but we gained the mind of christ god so right now down on the inside father we just praise you we just worship you we just adore you. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. You're helping us to press through and press on, God. You're helping us not to give up or throw in the towel, God. You're giving us the strength that we need, God, to do all that you called us to, God. Oh, God. Father, we give you praise and we just worship you and, and we adore you and we honor you right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Oh, come on. Give me some prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, any of you is dealing with the mind. Come on, come on. If this helps you with a mind situation. Oh, no, no, no. And sometimes other people will hold what you've done in the past against your mind. 
Come on, come on. You, the, 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 you, you done went on and you done got delivered and you set free. But sometimes all others will hold you to your past. But we come to break that chain right now. That they will forget those things. That they will forget, come on, what you did to them. That they will forget, oh my God, all the stuff and all the, the things that you've done towards them. So Father, I thank you for a renewal of the mind and, and thank you for strength, God. Because it's not only my mind. Come on, it, whenever you've done something in your past, it affects other people. So when I ask God to renew my mind, I, I want him to renew the whole, every, all the imps and everything that has something to do with my situation. Come on, I'm just not going to pray about my situation, but I'm going to pray about everyone that I've hurt in the past. I'm going to pray about, you know, I, we was talking about that Sunday, and I really believe when the devil goes into a meeting uh, about, uh, you know, trying to attack us or trying to stop our ministry or stop doing what we supposed to be doing, I believe there's a me meeting of a, uh, uh, imps and all kind of people that had something to do with whatever happened to us. So we pray for God to renew our mind and let's forget those things in the past. That means everyone that we hurt, every everyone that, that we dealt with in the past, because you know, we could be delivered and someone else could be still in the past. Come on, so we could be delivered but someone else could be still dealing with what we've done to them in the past. So when I pray, I just don't pray about my deliverance. I pray for, come on, come on. We talk about renewing the mind we're talking about uh, forgetting the past. I mean, forgetting the past that I, the past of the person that I, you know, messed up. <laughs> the past of the person is still dealing because of what I've done. So, you know, so I don't just cover myself by myself, but I cover the whole meeting, the whole imps, the whole everybody who had something to do for what I did in the past. So God, in the name of Jesus, we're being covered now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that whatever situation that we're going through, we're pressing through. And we're pressing through. Come on. Oh, my God. We, we're pressing through to the mark of the high calling. We're pressing through until we're pressing and pushing our way out. I thank you in the name of Jesus that the places that seem hard and the places and, and, the, and the areas that we're weak, God. You said that we are made strong and that we are the, we're overcomers, God. That that is not us. Oh, my God. That is not us. That is not us. Come on. Come on. We are are renewed in our mind and in our hearts and in our spirits in the name of Jesus. The Bible is accounted all joy when we fall into temptation. All count, count it all joy because the reason why we count it all joy because it gives God that oh my God you know, it, it pushes us. It grows us up. It, you know, because we already know that Jesus already is taking care of it. You know, we don't have to worry about it no more. Come on. Come on. We got the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Come on. So we know that whenever the devil tries to attack us, whenever he tries to hinder us, there is something God's about to do on the inside. There is something that God's about to change. Something about God's about to deliver. Something that God's about to heal. Come on. He's doing something great on the inside of us and we're allowing him to do it come on give me some hearts give me some hearts if you're allowing whew, God to do it right now I got so many scriptures coming into my mind right now so I'm trying to see if I can look them up real quick but at the same time give me some hearts and if you have any prayer requests please send the prayer request Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Let me take a deep breath. <laughs> okay, we had um, the Apostle James, the one and two, in fact, tells us to count it all joy when we endure trials and tribulations. It's be careful that James, be, care, be clear that James is not asserting that suffering is a good thing in itself. On its own, pain does not make us joyful. Rather, we count it as a joy when we face difficulties in this life. Hallelujah. That means he had, and, and if possible, go and ask that person to give. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good word. Whenever you go through something, if it's possible, go ask that person to forgive. That is good. That's good. That's good. Because when we're going through something, the enemy tries to, uh, you know, we, we, get, we are healed and set free, but it's left the other person is still... Uh, dealing with a mental issue or still dealing with some kind of crazy stuff. And uh, yeah, if it's possible, 
But if it's not possible, then you just got to let God do it and let him change it and let him, um, you know, do whatever he needs on the inside of us. That's why he told tell us to wash ourselves in the word. And I believe, too, that if we can't reach those loved ones or, the, or, or the, if it's friends or whatever, I believe that when God, because he's a big God and um, he knows all and understands, I believe that if once he delivered that area us, I, some, something just lets me know that he automatically got them covered. You know, because I, I really believe because God's a big God that he won't allow when he says forgetting those things of our past and, and he's throwing them. I mean, you forget about it. I, I just really believe I'm really getting revelation on this right now. I really believe that the ones we can't reach that God is dealing with that too. Because if the devil came in with a whole group of imps and a whole group of, you know, whatever he used to come against us, like our, our, our cause allowed us to do what we do. I believe when God delivers the core of the situation, that means the whole situation is handled. I really believe that. And I pray that um, in this situation that what, however God delivered us, he's delivering the whole situation because people can still, uh, you deliver and they can still try to bring your past back into your face. But I come to tell you that we are delivered. We are set free. We are made whole. We are, we're counting all joy because we know in the end we shall win. You know, when we go through diverse temptation and we go through strange, uh, count joy, steadfastness reduces perfection. The reason why we count out joy because it says it counts it all joy because steadfastness, you know, we go through things. It makes us strong. It pushes to a place that we didn't think we had the strength to go through. And it said, because steadfastness reduces perfection on the surface, the next word that James says can seem a bit strange. It says, when you go through children, count it all joy, because really, it's, it's working it out for your good. It's almost what that, that scripture about when, when Paul said, we press towards the mark, we press. That means this opposition is going to come, the situation is going to come, that we have to press through it. But the things we go through, even the stuff we went through in the past, it helped to make us stronger. We would probably oh, not be as strong as we are right now if we had not gone through it. So that's why I said we don't waste the stuff that we went through. We God uses it and turned it around for our good. And I always say, I don't waste the stuff I went through. That was a stepping stone to make me who I am now. I would not be strong if I had not been through what I've been through. But one thing about going through things in Christ, once you are gone through it, there is no trace of evidence that you've been through it. If someone ever talk to you and you said i've been on drugs i've been this i've been that and this is what i've done and look at you like it, it doesn't you don't look like what you've been through that means when jesus forgive you and he throws it in the sea of forgiveness that means he does not leave a trace sometimes you will have the scars and scars are there to remind you of what god done for you sometimes you gotta you, you gotta have proof now so people can really understand this is my scar this, they call it battle scars. This is something I've been through. I, I got a scar to show you what I've been through. Come on, say scars, scars, scars. It's evidence of what you've been through. But your mind has been renewed. Come on, come on. Th there's no trace of it in your mind. Somebody who's been uh, delivered from drugs, there is no trace of drugs on them. Somebody's been an alcoholic. There is no trace. God has healed your heart, your liver. And come on, when I believe when God delivers you and sets you free, he He. 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 he New your body, your, your whole insides. He a new heart, a new liver, a new, everything that the devil meant for God, bad, God turned it around. And I believe that when God set us free and we become a new creation, our whole body gets healed and gets blessed and gets changed. Come on, oh God, I thank you, God. Okay, uh, James is saying we should we shouldn't forget our past because it's part of God's story, and we tell that story for the glory of God. The part I'm talking about, and that's good right there is forgetting the, the part of the past that torments you. Sometimes we have to forget about it. It's some things that we have done, come on, that we, we don't want to tell nobody. <laughs> and sometimes the enemy will hold things against us. And there's a period of time that it, it's some things we've done that we don't want to repeat as a testimony. That's what I'm talking about, the tormenting part of your past. The, the things you went through that only you and God will know and you want to forget, the, the scripture says forgetting those things and, and, and putting those things aside. Because some of those things are triggers for you to, you know, some things you got to forget because it's triggers. And the devil uses triggers that cause you to go back to 
where you come from. So now we're talking about drugs or alcohol or things like that. Yes, you deliver, set free, you made whole. That's an anointing to go back on that territory. But then, you know, a lot of those uh, other things that I talked about that I want to forget. And forgetting doesn't mean, uh, for, when he says forget those things, I don't really mean it meant forget. I mean, he says, leave behind you. Don't let it be part of you. Don't let it be part of your conscious of that being you. You're forgetting that that was you, but you, you, you still have memory of the past, but you're forgetting about the devastation, uh, uh, about, you know, the, the hardship of the mind. It's not in the mind. You're renewing your mind of the situation, and that situation is not causing you to falter or fall anymore because we'll never forget our, 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 what we've gone through, but you for, you'll forget about that part of your life that the devil tried to hold you back and the devil tried to hold you at bay. That's what that scripture is talking about. I think that word forget is not the same as our natural thinking of forget. Uh, uh, it, it's something that we have to, because sometimes if we keep that at bay, it will stop us from moving forward. And we got to move those things behind us and forget from the spirit realm of that situation and move towards the destiny God has called us to. Now, anytime God want to use something, that means he, he knows that if, the, if you bring back up that situation, he knows that it is not going to cause you to falter. There are sometimes years that some things will come to your mind that will trigger something. And that's why you got to keep your mind washing of the word. That sometimes when you hear from drugs, you got to be away from drugs for a period of time before you can go back to drugs again, not, not to, to witness to somebody on drugs. Because you need to make sure that you're forgetting that stuff, that, that you become a new creation and you're not bringing that old man back into Because sometimes you be careful talking about it. I mean, my husband used to talk about that he had to be careful that when he brought up his past that he wasn't glorying in his past he wasn't using it as you know i used to be on drug you know i used to smoke this i used to do this and i you know and sometimes we can glorify that uh, a part of our past so we really have to be careful on when we want to testify of our past and knowing that god saying uses that that was a, a situation that i was in not too long ago and it's something that i have i haven't thought about for years but it just so happened that i had to um I had to counsel a lady and God brought me back a situation just for the counseling session. He brought me back on a situation I totally forgot about, but it was perfect for what I needed it for. So what God does, he'll use it when, it, when we need it, he'll use it. And then he said, put it back. <laughs> Don't dote on it. Don't talk about it. You leave it behind you. So God has, we have tools that we can use. We have things that, 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 uh, uh, that God has, has brought us from, that we can help somebody through, that, that don't have to go through it. Come on. When you deliver, once you set free, you are free indeed. And you don't have to bring up that God help me. I need to be delivered. We were constantly asking God for, to deliver us for the same things over and over in which God is already saying, forget those things. Come on, you're delivered. Come on. You need to move towards your future. You need to move towards your destiny and the things that God has called you to. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because he's doing a new thing on the inside of you. Oh, my God. He's, oh, my God. The, the, the mind is, a, oh, my God. That's the devil's battleground. That's the thing that he fight us the most. And that's the most thing that we have to, that's why he said put on the helmet of salvation. That means I'm covering my front. The helmet covers your front, your, your, your most of your neck, too. It covers that because that is the, the foundation, the conscious. That's that's your thinking. That's your that's what you've got to meditate on, make your next move. That's decision making. Your mind is uh, is the functioning or your brain of your whole body. And that's why he attacks your mind. And then that's why we're telling God to renew our minds daily. I'm telling you, come on, you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like getting out of bed, you go and pray in the Holy Ghost to build yourself up. It's something about, they did research about the mind when people, People are speaking in tongues. He said, when people are speaking in tongues, uh, they did some kind of 
I don't know, cap scan or whatever they did. And when people are speaking in tongues, they said their mind, their, their natural mind totally shuts down and it lets them know that, that there's something supernatural that takes over your mind when you're speaking in tongues. They tested a whole lot of people and they said there was something strange about people that prayed in the spirit. Come on, they took them in the room and told them to pray in the Holy Ghost. And then they took them in the room without praying in the Holy Ghost. And it was two separate whole cap scan pictures of what the mind looks like. And that's really cool because he said, building yourself up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So then when you pray in the Holy Ghost, it renews your mind. It heals. It sets free. It, it, it causes your mind to be sober. It causes your mind to get out the natural realm and go into the spiritual realm. And that's why the devil is so much against tongues. There's so much contradiction things about tongues that tell you, you can't do this. You can't do that. But I come to tell you, do whatever you need to do. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Come on, come on. And work out your soul salvation so whatever you need to do you need to fight do whatever weapons you need to use come on oh my god people are not in your situation they don't know what you've been through or what you're going through but if you pray in the Holy Ghost, wash your mind with the word oh my god just wait and see what God is doing and what he will do in your life because there's a future and a destination that God has for you we got to get the word out there's so many people in, uh, in the institutions and, and so many people, God, they have lost their mind. And I really believe that the enemy has tormented them so much until their mind just couldn't even take life anymore. But I come to tell you, come on, come on. When you're a new creation, whoo, you actually really become brand new. Hallelujah. Part of deliverance is receiving the deliverance, which means it's a gift. Amen. Amen. He's saying part of deliverance is receiving the deliverance. Yes, you have to receive it because we can quote the scriptures all we want to. But if we don't receive it, we won't. Because, you know, most people are still talking about their mind and talking about their past. And they're, they're, they have forgetting those things which was behind. They're not forgetting. They keep conjuring up and bringing up that same old stinky thinking, that same old thing. You know, and you already, God's already saying, I'm, I'm delivering you. I, I want to set you free. I need you, like he said, a gift. I want you to receive it. But if we keep on you know, reminding ourselves on where we are and what we, we're constantly, oh my God, we're, the, the devil going to always try to torment us. He's always going to do that, but it shouldn't be over the same thing over and over. It makes it look like our God can't do anything. It makes it look like our God can't deliver. It makes it look like he can't set us free. But I come to tell you that it's something that we have to do. We have to get into the word. We can't get past the word of God. God, that is a weapon. Oh my God, that is our antidote. It is the word of God. Come on, put on there the word of God. The word of the pastor race and receive it. You have to receive it and know. Come on. That's what faith is a substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. I'm receiving it. Oh my God. Come on, come on. I'm receiving it. That means I'm allowing him to do something great on the inside of me. Come on. If you feel your mind be renewed, say renew, 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 renew. Oh, my God. And he knows that if he attacks your mind, that the business that God has on the inside of you, the, the, the talent God has on the inside of you, if he, if he got your mind, <laughs> you won't get up and do anything. If he got your mind, oh, God, you'll keep going over the same stuff over and over. And you won't even uh, uh, go into, you know, step into the future. God's called you too. Come on, come on. He wants to renew us. Come on. He wants to change us. He wants to deliver us. And we have to receive what he wants to do in our life. Come on. We can't keep always the same thing over and over when we say we got Christ and we got God in our life. And if we're saying the same thing over, then it's something that we're not doing. I question your prayer life. I question your word life. I, I question your consecration. God, there's a season that we will go through. But it said, oh my God, it's, 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 it's not forever. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's not the rest of our life. 
And it's not the same thing over and over. The same thing. And every time we ask for prayer, you're praying over the same thing. But if you just believe, there's some things we don't have to pray for. If you just consecrate yourself and get in the Word, there are certain things that we do not have to pray for if we do what we are supposed to do. Oh, and what the devil does, he don't want you to know the word. He don't want you to say it is written. He don't want you to cast them out or cast them down. He wants to stay housed into your spirit. Come on, he don't want to let you go. Come on, he's been in there so long. Come on, he done found a resting place in you. Come on, oh, but when you call that Holy Ghost fire, when you say, Holy Spirit, have your way, do it down on the inside of me, God. Father, I need you to come and rest excuse me, I need you to renew my mind, I need you to renew my heart, I need you to renew my spirit, and I'm meditating on the word, it means I'm rolling the word over and over in my mind, over and over, 24-7, that means I'm not letting up, come on, it depends on how bad do you want him, come on, he gave us the antidote, he gave us the remedy, he gave us things to do, and we cannot, oh my God, we cannot go a day without the word, we can't go a, a day without uh, at least fasting for a meal, we can't go a day without doing what we're supposed to do. If we want to keep the devil at bay, if we want to keep the devil coming off our trail, we want to keep the devil out of our life, out of our children, and out of our family. Woo! Under the bush, under the Bahia. So, God, we thank you for this word of encouragement. We thank you, God, that our minds renewed. Oh, my God. My mom just say that slew foot. We're making sure that he is not taking advantage of us, that he is not in our marriage. Oh, my God. He is not in our children. He is not in our business. He is not in our life. Oh, my God. He cannot touch us. Come on. He has no right. He's illegal unless we invite him in. But I know as a child of God, we are not inviting him in. We are doing whatever it takes, come on, to be free, to be holy, and to be changed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, if that was a word for you, come on, give me some heart, a word for somebody else. Or come on, just share it. Come on, he's doing something. He's doing something fresh in this season. And you got to get to the point that you're not letting nothing separate you from the love of God. You're not letting nothing separate you from where you are. Because we're growing. We're maturing. Come on, come on. We're we're getting to that place that God wants us to be. And come on, you got to be courageous. Come on, by force. Come on, you got to force your way through. Force your way in. Come on, come on. And you got to scream out, Holy Ghost fire. Come on, because I always say when the devil see you and you pray to and consecrate uh, and consecrate it and you oh god you in that secret place when the devil sees you he see nothing but fire around you and the devil don't want to touch us because he's afraid of the fire of the holy ghost come on he is our helper we're stirring up the gift that's down on the inside we're stirring up the holy ghost come on oh my son did it by higher we're stirring up come on by our minds being renewed we're stirring up come on by doing what god say by walking in obedience by doing everything god calls us we're stirring up. Oh, he told us to stir up the gift. And how do we stir up the gift? By the meditation and washing of the word. How do we stir up the gift? By fasting and praying. By Oh, how do we stir up the gift? By being in our secret place. That's how we stir up the gift on the inside. And the more we stir it up, the more he trusts us. The more he stirred us, he preparing us for ministry. The more by my seeky, I know the most shine of the Bahia. Oh, God, I feel your glory, God. The more we seek him, we will find him. We can't give up. Come on. He said, Matthew 7 and 7 asks, and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we give you praise that I got on my helmet of salvation. Oh, no, but no matter what comes in my way, come on. No matter what comes in my atmosphere, that my, come on. No matter what, come on. I got on my helmet of salvation. I'm protecting my mind. I'm protecting my spirit. I'm protecting my heart. Come on, come on. Oh, the boat shot out of my higher. We got to put on the whole arm of God. Come on, we got to leave it on because things are come. Come on, the devil try to come and trick you. He'll try to uh, um, cause you to. 
change your mind and, and, and tell you that God ain't doing nothing. God's not changing. Come on, but I come to tell you, it doesn't matter what it looks like. God is doing something new now on the inside because come time in the situation you're going through, he's purging you. Come on. He get him out. He's knowing that you can't do this without him. You can't do this by yourself. Come on. But he's telling you to push forth. Come on. Push all the way in and don't give up or throw in the towel because when you get on the other side, the enemy don't want you to get on the other side. But we already said we're going to the other side. But when you get on the other side, oh my God, the blessings and miracles and things, come on, oh, that you've been praying for for years. It's on the other side of your trial. It's on the other side of your tribulation. Come on, what the devil stole from you, the canker worms and, and oh my, the locusts, come on, whatever you stole, God's giving you devil for your trouble, whatever you lost, he's going to give it back double. Come on, the, uh, 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 who was that? Job. He lost his wife. He lost his children. He lost all his possessions. The devil thought that he was going to curse God and die because he lost his wealth. He lost everything. Come on. But all oh, in the end, he, he won. Come on. He got double for his trouble. Come on. God gave him a new wife. Come on. God gave him some more kids. Come on. God gave him even double wealth than he had before. Come on. But Job had to stand. He had to hold on. Though there's times he, come on, come on, come on. His friends tried to come and cause him the doubt and causing the fear and causing him to think that God didn't love him. And I'm pretty sure the devil was messing with his mind. But he said, though you slay me, yet will I trust him. Come on. Oh, well, shut. He didn't know what was going on. All he knows to trust God. All he knows is to stand when it seemed like we can't stand no more. But Job stood and he didn't curse God. And he didn't give up. Even when his wife said, well, we won't, might as well just curse God and we all die. Even though, come on, she said that. He did not give up. Come on. He kept on standing. But in the end, come on, God came through with a blessing. God came through with a miracle. Come on, Job thought he probably couldn't go through it. Come on. Oh, my God. But he stood. Come on. Because the Holy Ghost fire and the, the Lord was standing with him. Come on. There's sometimes you go through something. God will allow you to go through so it can make you strong. It can make you out of this powerhouse. But right when you're going through something, he is standing there with you because he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you oh my god but when you get through i know you are hurting come on i know you in pain i know it seems like it's hard come on i know it's a season you feel like you want to give up i know there's times you don't feel like getting out of the bed but i'm telling you if you just get up come on and you pray in the holy ghost get in your word and you say god i'm standing come on i'm not giving up because i know what's going oh come what's ahead of me i know that if i reach to the other side that all i've been going that was worth it Oh, come on, because it made me strong. It took me to another place in him. Ooh. God, I give you praise. God, I can give some hearts. Because if I'm talking to you right now, just give me some hearts. Just give me some hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Teresa said, Thank you for the renewing of my mind. Hallelujah. 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 God, we just worship you. Come on, just worship him. Come on. Under the bush, under the Bahia. He can under the bush, under the Bahia. Father, we worship you. And we find our rest in you. Oh, God. Father, I call for healing of any sickness or any pain. He said, by your stripes, we're healed. God, I thank you right now for the healing virtue that's coming over all of us right now. I thank you in the name of Jesus that we're healthy. And we are, we are at that place, God, to where you need us to be with our minds being renewed and our minds are being holy before you. So, Father, we just thank you for the strength of the Lord that's entering us right now, God. We thank you that we're meditating on the word day and night, God. So we won't sin against your word and sin against you, God. I thank you in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you that the peace of God that passes in all understanding, oh, God, is guarding our hearts and our minds and our spirit. That whatever situation that we're going through, I thank God that we're going through and coming out, God. That the Holy Ghost fire, God, is always directing us and leading us and God is to all truth. I thank you in the name of Jesus, that you are a helper, God, that you are peace and you are joy and that you are our everything, God. So right now, God, we give you praise. 
and we give you honor and we know that the best is yet to come. Oh, We know the best is yet to come. We know what he told us. We know the word that he's spoken to our spirit. God, we're picking back our mantles up. We're dusting them off. Hallelujah. Oh, we're getting ready to do ministry on, on a big scale. Come on, tell yourself. We're getting ready to do ministry on a higher level. Father, we thank you. Lord, you know what? I got to go. Father, we thank you. I appreciate everybody coming on. Come on, give me some hearts. Give me some hearts if you were blessed today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Come on, give me some hearts if you've been blessed today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I see Kiki gives some hearts. Oh, I see Teresa giving hearts. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Father, we welcome, we seal this prayer. That our minds have been renewed as soon as we get off of the live. But we're going to search some scriptures to meditate on the word. To keep our mind washed and clean and holy. Keep the devil at bay. Come on. Your minds be renewed. You got on the hammer of salvation. It's covering your spirit. It's covering your heart. And you got a word in your spirit that you're, oh my God. One thing about the devil. He can't fight against the word. As long as the, you, you are meditating on the word. Man, he cannot touch your mind. He cannot touch your thinking. He cannot get in your conscience. He cannot mess with you in your decision making. He cannot do that. Oh, my love, I see key on the other behind. What's it, Zena? Hey, Zena. He's saying great, great morning. Bless you, bless you, bless you. He cannot do it. Come on. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we worship you. With everybody, I love you. We'll be back on tomorrow. I got a lot of work to do. But we'll be back on tomorrow. Because we're on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, uh, Thursdays, and Fridays at 10 o'clock every day. There's days I'm going to get on here, I may just sit and not say nothing. <laughs> I'm just a type person. Whatever God say, do. I try not to make nothing happen. Come on, come on. Give the Holy Spirit liberty to do whatever he wants to do. Father, we worship you. We lift you up. We give you glory. I got to learn how to work this computer a little faster because Christian scriptures be coming to my mind that I cannot even quote. <laughs> I know bits and pieces of, of it and, and a little of it, but I can't. I got to learn how to move this thing a little faster. Ooh. God moves. He be going through quickly, going through uh, scriptures, and you try to find them all. See, my husband, he's the one that quotes real good. <laughs> I love everybody. I'm pissed to get off. It, you can actually put some prayer requests on after, uh, if you think of something later on, a testimony or something like that. You can put it on later in the comments after this is over with. Hallelujah. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love Miss Baker. Love you. Amen. And well, I'll see y'all tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. All right. Bye-bye.